everybody. It's James Gilbert, and this is the Work Hard People's Podcast. We have been away for a little while, but we are back. And we have the beautiful Miss Valerie Valentino, who also Instagram. She's the Jack the Juice Girl. She's also <laughs> the powerlifting princess, and we we love her. And uh, she's going to hang out with us today. She's got some pretty cool changes she's been uh, making in her life. How are you doing? I'm great. Happy to be here again. Good. We love having you. Love oh, having thanks. you. So everything's been well. I know you got you made some changes. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, we did a podcast and we talked about some of her changes. And then uh, my uh, laptop took a crap and whew, it was like we lost the whole show. And it was great, too. But I'm right. glad she decided to come back on. So you've kind of made a switch. You used to be in this uh, strong woman competition and things like that. And then now you are doing CrossFit. Yes. Yeah. And it's... um. So every time I'm doing a CrossFit workout and I feel like I'm going to die, I just remember that that's what I get for uh, talking crap about CrossFitters for so many years. I <laughs> shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Put you in on a secret. So years ago, this was, man, this had to be 20 years ago. Uh, I went to, a, I, I started a new gym and uh, part of the thing they give you for starting a new gym, you get to work out with a trainer, right? They're mm -hmm. like, hey, we'll give you this free one hour lesson with a trainer. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I know what I like to do, but I'll, I'll do it. Let's check it out. So this guy was in the CrossFit. Very first workout. What does he have me do? I have to do, uh, what was it? I did, so I, I do 10 deadlifts and one burpee. Nine deadlifts, two burpees, right? And just swap the two. Man, mm -hmm. I got done with that. It took me like five minutes to get through it. I thought I was going to throw up. Like, yes. Like, screw CrossFit. I'm just lifting weights, man. For real. It's intense. So it's been oh. very humbling. Yeah. I got friends that do the Murph every year. Yeah. Uh, and, like Matt Deacons. You know Matt? You remember Matt? Yeah, yeah. He was on with mm -hmm. us. So he, uh, that, he's, um, uh, He's put on a little bit of weight lifting. He's lifting heavy, heavy stuff. And he was getting back in shape. And he's incorporating some CrossFit into his training just to get back in shape. And one yeah. of his goals is to do the Murph. And I'm like, screw that, dude. Not me. No, yeah, it's not. brutal. Yeah. Brutal. Yeah. It does. It's hard the whole time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It never, it never gets easy. But, hey, <laughs> if you want to – I am a firm believer – that you can use the if if you struggle so for those of you that don't know many do that you know i had a severe break in my foot my foot is messed up i cannot do cardio there's a lot of things i can't do like i can't do back squats anymore i can't do you know i can't pound walking I, walking's very difficult to do it for long periods mm -hmm. of time like i can get around i can go to the store but you know to pound cardio i can't do it I have learned how to turn my workouts into high intensity cardio. Mm, and, yeah. uh, you know, I do it with volume and yeah, it's junk volume. It's not doing a whole lot other than I'm moving. Right. Mm -hmm. And I've also started to incorporate, I, I've been real into powerlifting, like getting stronger, like running yeah. stronger, lifting heavier and heavier weight. So I go in and the first half of my workout is like, First of all, I'm old. You can tell, right? Gray hair. I'm old as dirt. No. You know? But I, so I don't like to, I don't, I'm, I'm not going in to max out anything, right? I don't, I'm, yeah. I'm not at the age where I want to be popping tendons off the bone, right? Yeah. But I will lift to a heavy set of like five or eight. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I do that for the first half of the workout. And then the second half of the workout is all ancillary muscles. It's high volume. It's supersets. Man, I'll mm -hmm. come out of the gym on a back day, and my Fitbit says I burn 900 calories. Like, I'm yeah. in the cardio zone for 50 minutes. Yeah. So, what you're talking about, that type of intensity with CrossFit, woo. I'm telling you yeah. what. Yeah. I really, I love it. I thought I wouldn't like it. I don't know why. I don't know why. I think it's just because kind of in the, like, strength community of, like, strongman and powerlifting, Everyone just kind of always talks crap about CrossFitters because they're not lifting as heavy. So I kind of, you know, 
fell into that. And yeah. now I'm like, wow, that wasn't very nice. Like, this is my karma right here because this yeah. is very challenging. And you can still lift heavy and push yourself and you still find your one rep maxes and stuff like that yeah. in it too. So it's uh, it's really good. The hardest workouts I've ever done. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, I, I 100% agree with you. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know if you know much. Uh, have, have you guys ever followed anything for Max and Sledge at all? No, not really. So Seth Ferrosi, you know, he's a, a retired professional bodybuilder. He started a supplement company. It's Ax and Sledge. Um, they, uh, but he calls them. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this nice because it's a family friendly show. But he could not get the words CrossFit out of his mouth, but knew that he needed to start doing some workouts like that. So he calls it functional and effable. <laughs> Those are the workouts that are going to get him in shape, right? That's funny. And yeah. I was dying. I'm like, what? <laughs> but I know why you and JW like it. You guys like hard things, man. Right. I know. I mean, you do. guys know. You do. You guys push. You, you're you always striving to get better, whether it's with your relationship with the Lord, your relationship with each other, your family, mm -hmm. the gym, your community, yes. your business. You guys yeah. always push the envelope. And that is what makes us better. That's what I love mm -hmm. about you guys. That's, that's why right. I just, I want to see you succeed. Yeah. Right? I was uh, in the middle of a workout, I think it was last week, and it was very hard. And I couldn't breathe. I thought I was going to throw up. I wasn't even halfway done yet. And I was like, what kind of sick person does this to themselves? And then as soon as we finish, I get this huge endorphin rush. And I'm like, this is why. Like, I yeah, love it. I that's so it. That, yeah. did, did, you saw that picture of my quad, right? No. That video I sent? Oh, no, I, my, I wasn't getting pictures on my phone. I just updated oh. it today yeah. so that's why i had sent you those pictures on yeah. facebook but I you need it. to look at that because i figured out how to do hack squats with my i've shown you that boot i have to wear right yeah for my foot and it's very limiting but i i so i figured out how to do hack squats where i can get my feet in a, a good position i can't stay flat footed because of the way the yeah. boot is i have to get on my heel but it relieves all the pressure off my foot. And I just did body oh. weight, right? And I got on the hack squat machine. I did uh, five sets. I got up to 75 total reps just with my body weight. And when I got home, I'm telling you, my quad for like 15 minutes was like. Duh, 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 duh. Oh, man. And I sent you that video. You and JW, I sent oh, the video. Okay. And it's just like, I mean, it's like insane. Yeah. It doesn't even look real. So, because wow. it, it had been two plus years since I've been able to do anything like that. Yeah. So it, my legs were like, and I'm telling you, they have been, ooh, it's been a rough week. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Oh my god. But gosh, it's great. Yeah. Like you say, the endorphin rush. I loved it. Yes. Yeah. Loved That's why we do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because we've had this conversation, you and I, uh, you know, the gym for me, it's Prozac. Like it literally right. is like taking yeah. an antidepressant. Right. I, I don't feel right uh, when I don't go. Now, if it's a rest mm -hmm. day, like today, I didn't go because uh, today was back day. And I, I like my lats are cramping. I'm, um, you know, my back's still sore because I've been going real heavy. And I, I've learned because yeah. I always train. I would train sometimes seven, eight days in a row and then yeah. take a day off. And I've learned that when you're going heavy, you can't do that. You got to right. Throw you got to throw a little bit more rest in the central nervous system just can't handle it. Right. It can't, it, it jacks it up. So, um, mm -hmm. so I took the day off. I am going to go meet my client when we get done here um, uh, and uh, go over some little training with him, but he just had his first show. He'll be on next week. Um, he did really good. First show he took second place. Oh yeah. I saw, I got physique. those pictures. So yeah, yeah, he did really good. He was, Oh, he That's was awesome. bone dry and peeled. I'm telling you right now, this kid, he was, uh, he was bone dry. And here's a, here's a little thing too, right? With him, he got on the stage. He was single digit body fat. We had his body fat tested. I, I can't remember what exactly what I think it was six, six or seven drug free. It's a natural competition. Uh, he was, um, literally peeled 
bone dry, wasn't even sweating, posing under the lights. He never drank less than a gallon of water and never ate less than 150 carbs. Wow. And still got bone dry and peeled. So yeah. it just goes to show you that, you know, I see a lot of people that are like suffering, that they're going so hard. Like there was one kid there that uh, like he wouldn't even take a sip of water. Mm -hmm. And he, mm -hmm. he was sweating. He was still watery and he, he hadn't been drinking water for a couple of days, like hardly any. And I'm like, there are ways if you, if you follow the science and you really, you know, don't try to do it yourself, people mm -hmm. get out there and learn, right? Like when you started doing CrossFit, you didn't just go, oh, I'm going to figure this out myself. Right. Right. Nope. You, sure you did some research, right? Started yeah. learning the workouts, how to do certain things. Same yeah. thing if you're prepping learn mm -hmm. get out there and learn yeah yeah so. it's dangerous if you don't oh yeah you know i think yeah, people don't realize up. that they just they just think it's like it's fun and it's healthy so they just hop in and it's like but you need to find someone who can guide you and show you how to do it because you can get people do get really hurt and then that's how lifting gets this gets this bad reputation of oh you got to be careful doing that oh don't hurt your back and it's like well you got to be smarter about it there's a right way to yeah. do it you can't just hop in and think, oh, this is going to be fun and then go try to deadlift heavy weight or cut a bunch of body fat in a bad way, you know? Yeah. Well, that's where kidney problems, especially kidneys, man, like bodybuilders. First of all, just a little sidebar here. Getting on stage, people, is not healthy. That moment, right. that, that last week and a half prepping to get on a bodybuilding stage, that is not healthy. It isn't. Mm -hmm. uh, you put your, you definitely are taxing your system. You are, uh, on the borderline of being dehydrated. Even if you're drinking a gallon, if you're used to drinking two gallons and you pull sodium and drop it to a gallon and all that water goes, even though you're drinking a gallon, you're still dehydrated. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's hard on the kidneys and things. That's why it's a, a finite moment in time. You are prepping for a single day and then you're right back into Gradually. And the other side of that, and we're going to talk about this next week, like prep tricks, just things you can do to help the body uh, get prepared for that so that you don't hurt yourself. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, a, a, one of the biggest mistakes people make is they come out the other side of a show and they just eat. And the organs aren't ready to handle all the food. You mm -hmm. almost have to do what's called a reverse diet. You, you need to mm -hmm. diet back into your macros. You can't mm -hmm. just can't just get there, right? Right, that so, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, but it's uh, it's it's fun. I love doing it. I love working with people. I love coaching people. So, uh, and now, you did a you did a CrossFit event not long ago, right? Yeah. How did that go? It was awesome. It was my first one, and uh, I I wanted to do one, but so in CrossFit there's teams. I'm used to doing strongman and powerlifting where it's solo, but in CrossFit, mm -hmm. oftentimes you're on a three person team. So uh, they they had a girl back out, and they asked me. They're like, "Hey, you know, next weekend there's competition, and we need somebody." And I at first I was making all these excuses. I was like, "No, I got the business. I got the kids. I got the husband. Like, how are we gonna do it? I can't make it work." And then I was like, I kind of do want to do something spontaneous and I really want to do a competition. So I just, I got the store covered and I, uh, my mother-in-law watched one baby and then we brought the other one with us and I just, I did it. And it was, yeah. fun. we got second place. That's good. Which was cool out of a bunch of teams. And it was just so, it was so fun. It was awesome. I loved it. But that is also the point where you realize that something went wrong, right? Like something didn't feel right. JW was well, telling me you lifted some weight and felt uh, something ain't right. Tell us well, a little bit it kind about of, that. What's going on? So it, I think it's been going on for a while and I just didn't know it. And uh, then when I was, I was pregnant back to back. So I was pregnant, had a baby four months later, I was pregnant again. So, um, at the end of my first pregnancy, I couldn't even do an air squat without pain. So I stopped, finished, I had my baby and then I'm feeling good. And I was squatting heavy, lifting heavy, did a strongman competition. I was fine. Got pregnant again. And near the end of that pregnancy, 
I was like, oh, babe, my back hurts. My hips hurt. Like, I'm just, I'm pregnant. So that's going to happen. I just thought it was normal. So he was rubbing my back and he feels my spine. And he was like, he was like, babe, there's a lump on your spine. And I was like, what? So I feel it. And I got freaked out. I was like, oh my, oh my gosh, like, that's not normal. So I text one of my friends who's a chiropractor. And I was like, hey, I, my back feels broken. Like, I need you to look at it. And he was probably like, Valerie's being dramatic. <laughs> so I well, go in and um real quick, real quick, before before that, I mean, you from our if anybody saw the first podcast with Valerie, she has already kicked cancer's ass. So I I mean, that's got anytime something isn't right after going through that, that has to be scary. Yeah, but I I don't think I realized like I thought it was just I'm just pregnant. It's normal. It'll go away. Like it's yeah. just a, for now. It's normal. It'll go away. And I'm so as li from being a lifter, you're so used to like pushing through hard situations. It just is so normal. I was like, I'm in some pain. It's okay. Push through it. It'll be okay. So have my baby. And she's a year and a half now. So I'm like, we're trying to get stronger. And I have numbers I want to beat. Like I have my squat <laughs> 350. I want to beat it. My deadlift 375. Like I want to beat it. Like when I, right before I started having babies, I was getting, I was doing really good and getting stronger. Yeah. So I was like, okay, put that on hold, have some babies, get right back after it. And it's been a year and a half and I'm like, not progressing. Like I, I should be like, I can't, I'm in pain. I can't jump I have this bump on my spine still like my spine is sticking out of my back and when I squat and deadlift it hurts like, something's wrong mm -hmm. so I start getting adjustments I go to a chiropractor and getting massages and I was trying to honestly to avoid getting an x-ray like I didn't want to be radiated if I didn't have but to if I don't know what it is it isn't real <laughs> yeah I was like it's okay so, and even the people I've seen several chiropractors and stuff about it and nobody seemed really concerned with it, which I always thought was weird. I was like, yeah. my spine is popping out of my back and nobody seems worried about it. So okay, I go and I finally get an x-ray. I'm like, I need to know what's going on. And uh, the chiropractor comes in and he's like, Hey, how's it going? And I was like, it's good. You know, I just have a broken back. And he goes, Oh, you saw the x-rays. And I was like, I was, I was just kidding. I was just, uh. I was just joking around. Um, I was like, I see them, but I don't know what they say. And he was like, oh, well, yeah. He's like, your back essentially is broken. Yeah. And it's basically, he told me like, I will never max out again. Like I'm a grade three. And yeah. if you get to a grade four, you have to get a fusion. I've had some people tell me, like, if you get to a grade four, you could be paralyzed. And, and what's it called exactly? Uh, spondylosthesis. Okay. And that's so, like, front and back shifting, right? Like, your spine is literally shifted. Yeah. Yeah. So, your spine is supposed to be like this, right? With your tailbone yeah. right here lined up. Uh -huh. And then my tailbone is sticking out. So, and this is like barely hanging on to this. So like, that's a bump in my back is my tailbone, like protruding out of my back. So yeah, I'm so thankful that I can still lift and still move like strongman and yeah. powerlifting. If I kept doing that, I would have, I could have gotten like paralyzed or like really yeah. bad and wouldn't yeah. have even known it. So God's timing is so good for that, you know? Yeah, hundred uh, percent. And I know that feeling that when you're told that, like with my foot, I knew it was super bad. I mean, I knew that I I did something that is going to be life altering when I broke it. Right? I knew it was mm -hmm. never going to be the same. I didn't know the extent. Like I know now. Uh, you know, I'll be yeah. in that boot for the rest of my life if I want to do any activity. Um, but. When I really, so like legs, like heavy, heavy weight. That is my favorite thing. Deadlifts, uh, heavy yeah. squats. I loved doing it. And when I realized I was never going to be able to do that again, that was hard. Right. It was something that I had to work through mentally and figure out, okay, I can't do that heavy, but what can I do heavy, right? What yeah. can I do that is still going to give me that, 
that motivation, that drive mm, to continue yeah. to, you know, do things. And if you, I, I think you said something very important. If, uh, you know, God had a plan for you and let you know, because you could have gotten injured. Right. Yeah. I, that's how I look at it. Like, you know, I've had people say, yeah, you know, God will heal it for you if he wants. Yeah, but he can also leave it damaged so that I can show people that, you know what, just because you're messed up doesn't mean you can't continue to work hard and continue to be mm -hmm. thankful for everything you have in your life. Mm -hmm. Because I do not let it limit me. You know, I go to the gym, right. I coach athletes, I, uh, you know, uh, have I gained a few pounds because I can't do cardio the way I want? Yeah, so what? Dude, I feel great. My blood mm -hmm. works good. I have a beautiful wife. I have four beautiful children. I have four beautiful grandchildren, right? I mean, I got nothing to right. be upset about. Yeah. You know, I say all the time, you know, at the end of the podcast, I say, don't forget to smile because there's always a reason, people. Always. Right. Mm hmm Right. Yeah. I like to always say, Jada and I always like to say things we're grateful for. We'll just catch each other and we go, hey, what are three things you're grateful for? Like on the spot. Yeah. And because it's so easy without even trying, you'll fill your mind with all these negative things and things that are unfortunate. So I like to just make an active decision to put positive things in my mind. I'm like, what are we grateful for today? Yeah. You better say me. No, it's good. But <laughs> hey, by the way, love, did, love that new Instagram drop for Jack and Juice. Loved it. <laughs> It was fantastic. Matter of fact, my favorite part, I think I sent you a message. My favorite part was the pineapple in the corner. Oh, my. That, that was her I idea, was, too. I fell off the couch. I was like, oh, no, she did. Oh, my great. gosh. It was, so yeah, are those all your employees? So yeah. Yeah, that was great. That's good. So for those that don't know, let's have Valerie talk about this a little bit too. So uh, Valerie and JW have a cold press juice company called Jacked and Juice, and you can find that on Instagram as well. Unfortunately, these suckers are not able to ship product yet outside the state of South Dakota, but North if Dakota. you're in or North Dakota. But if you're in North Dakota, swing by and grab some Jack and Juice because uh, it looks delicious. I would love to try some. We just need to get them to be able to move that stuff outside I know. the state. Yeah. Yeah. So Jack and Juice, cold press juice, it's uh, our business. We have a storefront downtown. We do smoothies and toast and smoothie bowls and protein balls and then we have like a natural like a health store like with supplements and stuff in our storefront yeah. and then it's uh it's a christian business so we play christian music and we sell christian clothes and it's just the best thing it's such a blessing yeah and it's healthy cold pressed juice i mean you know mm -hmm. i'm i'm not a proponent of juice per se because i think that people could get in trouble Right. Because they're like, oh, I'm drinking orange juice. Yeah. Well, orange juice is eight. Even if it's all natural, it's eight oranges. Right. It I mean, a lot of oranges. A, it's, yeah. it's a lot of oranges to make a glass of orange juice. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a lot of sugar that the body's processing. But I do think that juice is good moderately. Right. You, you don't want to drink juice every single drink every single day. Right. Water is the nectar of life. But juice has huge benefits and when you're cold pressing it and doing it the way you guys are doing it all natural adding vitamins fiber different things you can that you guys are doing that i've seen just from your, your yeah, ads yeah. And your advertisement it it puts it at a whole new level right yeah i tell people it's like a liquid multivitamin that you can have yeah. every day instead of like the synthetic vitamins that you get from walmart or something mm -hmm. you know it's like a liquid multivitamin and if you know if you have high blood pressure, we have some with beets in it. Or if you're yeah. you have stomach problems, we have some with ginger in it. Inflammation, turmeric. You know, like there's different yeah. juices help with different things, and you can definitely use it as God's medicine that He's given. One hundred percent, and that I am a one hundred percent believer in holistic medicine. Herbs. Yeah. Like the Lord put all this stuff on the planet for a reason. Mm -hmm. We just need to use it correctly. The problem is right. human beings don't always use it the way it was intended, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> we use it in bad ways, but there are, I I love herbs and uh, just like I take that. I take turmeric. I take cinnamon. I take, mm -hmm. uh, you know, all natural, 100% natural yeah. uh, herbs because it makes me feel better. My joints, feel, turmeric, my joints feel better taking turmeric. 
Right. It does. Yeah. They every and you know, like I said, I'm older. I I get I got and not only am I older, but I have been rough on my body, right? Mm -hmm. Like we're talking motorcycle crashes. I played tackle football until I was 42 years old in pads. I mean, you know, I, I've been hard on this, this flesh and bone. So yeah. you know, these joints hurt from time to time. Right. So, but no, that's great. I, the, the business looks like it's doing good. It looks like you guys are growing. Yeah, and uh, I'm excited to see it. Your commercials are fantastic. Love Thanks. them when you post them. <laughs> I love them, man. They're it's great. to keep them fun. You know, no yeah. one wants to watch it. It's boring, and they feel like you're trying to sell them something. Like sometimes people just yeah. want to laugh and get to know you and get to know who's there. Yeah. So, and I'm going to tell you right now what you see in those commercials, people. If you go there, check out Jack and Jack and Juice or Jack and Juice. You check those out. What you see from JW and Valerie, that's what you get. That is who they are. <laughs> you are fun. You're you're very funny. You guys like to laugh. Uh, I, every experience oh, I've yeah. had with you has been fantastic. I know oh, we thanks. all have bad days, but mostly you guys seem like nope, a good no no bad days right. over here. Only good. <laughs> that's right. That's good. Oh yeah. Hey, happy Fourth of July, everybody! I got the old school yeah. laughs, red, white, and blue going on there for America. Yeah. <laughs> How's JW been? He's good. Oh, he's good. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing new with him. His he's doing fine. CrossFit now too, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I know. I know he. Uh, I can tell he feels bad about my back because he's like he's being so positive and supportive and like telling me it's gonna be okay and like he's been doing a lot of research on like foods I can he eat that are good for the spine and like exercises I can do to help with stability. And he's been yeah. like very uh, adamantly doing that, like without me asking. So yeah. it's very no, that's, sweet. And he sounds very him. similar to me, just even in conversations that I've had with him, I, I think we're uh, similar. He, I, I can tell you exactly why he does that because that's how he processes is to research and act yeah, rather than to do nothing. Right. Rather right. than just go yeah. to the doctor, we'll figure it out. No, I'm going to fit. Like my wife has struggled for many, many years with depression and anxiety. Mm -hmm. And I am telling you right now, I am an expert on depression yeah. and anxiety, the medications, the downsides of them, other things to use. Like she's got herself and she did this mostly on her own, just with her own learning and knowledge. I'm very, very proud of her, but she literally took herself all of, off all of her medication wow she downgraded herself now That's does that awesome. mean she has bad days she still has bad days there's days that her anxiety is through the roof but she is learning she's getting the tools to deal with it that she you don't get those on the medication all, the medication right. doesn't stop you from being depressed and it doesn't stop you from having anxiety all it does is shorten the the curve right Mm -hmm. You still have to learn how to deal with it. And if you're not learning how to deal with it, you're in trouble. Well, yeah, now her curve is right. a little wider because she's not on the medications, mm -hmm. but, but she's learning to deal with it. And the cool thing is, is I got my wife back. Like I got the happy, uh, funny, joking, yeah. not the zombie person that just right. goes and does and, you know, whatever and laughs occasionally. Uh, yeah, there's times where it's it's rough and she'll call me and be like, honey, I feel like this is just the it's a rough day. Right. Works bad, whatever. And and uh, but there's so many more of those good, fun, laughing. Fun yeah. things, right? And I love yeah. it. I'm very proud of her because it's not an easy thing to do. You can get very mm -hmm. used, especially dealing with SSRIs. You know, yeah. that, that's more addictive. Like SSRIs and alcohol are usually the only things that you have to wean yourself off of, where if you just mm -hmm. come off, you could die. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I've known know. people that are on like antidepressants and stuff and they'll come to me and they're like, I feel like a robot. Like I feel yeah. like emotionless. And uh, I feel like the doctors don't always tell people that that's a side effect of it that comes with it. It's like, it'll take away those some of those bad emotions that you don't want to have, but it'll mm -hmm. also take away your good emotions. It just takes yeah. it all away. Yeah, you know? Exactly. It doesn't, it doesn't choose which emotion to take. It takes them all away. Yeah. And yeah. the other thing too, is like, you'll still have bad days, 
even when you're taking medication and then you tell the doctor, hey, I've had bad days. And what do they do? They up your dose or add another medication. Yep. Yeah. Right. And it, it, if you can do that, if you can get to the point where you're using herbs and nutrition and different, you know, all natural supplements and things to help you deal to yeah. to alter the melatonin, to alter the hormones a little bit. Right. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to help. It's 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 a yeah. it's a much better, safer way to go about it. Yeah. But we do live know. in a pharma a pharmaceutical uh, society. I mean, oh, we yeah. Do. A pill for everything. Oh yeah. You want to lose weight? I, take Ozempic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I told you I was on anxiety medication at one point. So yeah. when I, I went to chemo six years ago, and one thing they did is they put me on this medication called Lupron, and Lupron puts you in menopause. And they did that during my chemo. They like put me in menopause. They like they told me they were going to turn everything off, and then after chemo. I had the hope it turned back on so I could have kids. And yeah. looking back, I wish they didn't do it. But at the time, I was like, that sounds good. Like, sounds like you're looking out for my best interest. Well, I had hot flashes for a long time after, yeah. even though I stopped taking the medication. And um, it was over a year. And I called them like, hey, I'm having hot flashes. And this was old Valerie. New Valerie does things differently. Old Valerie just like really trusted the doctors so I went to them and uh, they were like, oh, we can just put you on anxiety medication. And I was like, but I don't have anxiety. And they were like, yeah, but that's what we give women who have hot flashes. And I was like, okay, well, I'll try it. Not understanding like the repercussions of anxiety medication. So I just started taking it. I was like, okay, so like a week goes by, no hot flashes. And then they start coming back. So I call and I'm like, hey, it's happening again. What do I do? And they say, oh, just take one in the morning, one at night. So they keep doing that. They keep giving me more and more and more. And eventually I was like, Hey, even old Valerie was starting to think something was off. And I was like, Hey, yeah. what's the end game? You're just going to, I, how do I fix this? Like, you're just going to keep giving me more and more anxiety medication. Like I'm going to be popping a whole bottle a day at this rate. And, um, I was like, what's the end game? And they didn't have one. And I was so annoyed and I felt so tricked that I just quit cold turkey. Yeah. And which I don't think you're supposed to do. No, and, not, uh, not with that no. stuff. You, you want to. But, but I had taken it, it too long. But honestly, I was so I was just so mad. And then I had anxiety for like two weeks as all my brain chemicals like readjusted. And I was like, oh, my gosh, they were just giving it to me like it was candy. I didn't even I didn't even need it. And now I know about like valerian root and cbd and like all these natural things mm -hmm. i could have done to help with those symptoms that wouldn't have CBD, messed with my brain i'm telling you cbd is amazing uh thc is amazing i can't stand it myself like uh marijuana in any form i i don't know if i'm allergic to it i've tried it it makes oh. like uh, I, i'm i don't like it at all and mm -hmm. uh but i know people that use it and they use it correctly and it really benefits them. It, it helps them to right. uh, be yeah. functional and, and do things. And I know there's a lot of research into the CBD oils, like topical and, uh, you know, things like that. I know that they yeah. really work with joint and thing like that. But um, yeah, another thing that doctors don't realize when they're prescribing those drugs. So my day job is insurance. I sell life insurance, right? Mm hmm if you are on antidepressants, it is difficult to get life insurance. There really? are some companies that will turn you down. Even oh, I didn't if know you that. Have, yes, even if you have been prescribed it and didn't take it. And uh, that's for like, if you're asking medical question policies, right? Because there's all kinds of insurance. There's term, whole life, guaranteed issue, universal life, and all this stuff, right? Yeah. When you're getting medically underwritten for policies and they do a prescription check, if they see that you've been taking antidepressants, they'll disqualify you. And if you get disqualified while you're trying to get insurance, that goes into your medical information bureau report. So when you try to get another insurance, that's going to pop up that you were denied coverage for health reasons. Wow. I went to the doctor my foot, I sometimes my foot hurts really bad and I can't go to sleep at night. 
And I was just yeah. like, hey, you got like a mild uh, sleeping pill? He wrote me a prescription for something. I never took one, a single pill. He wrote me a yeah. prescription for something. I looked at the prescription. I researched it. It was a drug for severe uh, depression. In a smaller dose that they use as a sleeping pill. But that, wow. if I wanted to get good, great, thankfully, I have all my yeah. insurance in place. Yeah. Just him writing that prescription goes into my report and could wow. get me Wow. It's a drug that's used for bipolar. Yeah. Depression. Wow. So be very, very careful before your doctor writes you a script for anything. You ask him what it mm -hmm. is, what it's used for, because they don't, you know, there's a lot of these drugs out there that have alternate uses that right. doctors will use for different things and different dosage amounts, but some of them are right. they're dangerous. Yeah. You know, I, and I was just like, it's just occasionally that uh i need a little something just to sleep through the pain mm -hmm. it's not often i'd say maybe two three times a month you yeah. know like like for instance yesterday uh you know i went to the gym at five o'clock in the morning got a great shoulder workout in uh, you know i lifted hard i was on my foot all day because i could mm -hmm. wear tennis shoes around the house my wife and I went and did some grocery shopping and I walked around the grocery store in my tennis shoe and not my boot mistake. Mm. But yesterday afternoon, my foot was thump, thump, thumping, right? Like it was hurt. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, you, sometimes like that, a little something helps, but uh, yeah, it's just, you got to be careful. You got to be careful because doctors, man, they are beholden to the pharmaceutical industry mm -hmm. and uh, they are against holistic medicine, most of them, because it's against what they are practicing, mm -hmm. right? You're taking money yeah. out of their pocket. Yeah. Have you heard of white willow bark? No. What is it? Oh, it's awesome. We sell it at our store. It, that's what I use if I have a headache. It's a natural painkiller. It's an herb. And it okay. was the original aspirin okay. and it helps with pain and inflammation. And it's like what I take instead of ibuprofen because it's not bad yeah. for your organs or your liver or your gut. It's just an herb that yeah. is a painkiller. So White that stuff's awesome. Hold on, right yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the best. And I, I mean, you can't, it's not like you can take too much and damage your organs like yeah. ibuprofen or something. So if I have a headache, I'll just take uh like three of those and if it's not gone in an hour i'll take a couple more and then i'm yeah. fine which i don't get in pain often but if i am that's my go-to yeah i do with my foot but i have noticed it is the the pain it's it's longer in the day before i do need to take some ibuprofen or, mm. or tylenol or something right yeah um, and i don't i don't like pain pills because I like pain pills. That's why <laughs> I'm gonna be very honest. Like the doctor prescribes me pain medication, I take it and I feel really, really good. I just right. I like it. Like I can see myself. Yeah. I, I I'm like, man, I could get addicted to pain pills. I could see right. It, right? Yeah, so, I totally like, get why people after people surgery. Do. After surgery, six days after, I'm like, I'm done. I took him for the first six days. I'm like, I'm done. And I called the doc. I'm like, hey. Well, I, I talked to his nurse. I'm like, hey, listen. I don't want to take these pain pills. And she goes, why not? And I said, well, because I like them a lot. <laughs> and I just, right. I'm not addicted. I've never had an issue. Yeah. You know, I've never had to go to rehab or anything like that, right? Yeah. I just, I know myself and I don't want to take them. What can I take instead? And she's like, well, I, I'm going to tell you right now, if you take two Aleve and two Tylenol, it will give you the pain relief of a slight or a mild narcotic without the obvious furry or addiction mm. or anything like that. Yeah. So I started trying that and it worked. And I was mm. like, great. So six days after surgery, I cut myself off. I'm like, boom, we'll just do this Tylenol and Aleve. I did that, worked great. And uh, But I do have to take, ibuprofen and stuff I, I i'm gonna get some of that try that for sure yeah because yeah. i would like to definitely you know if i could get it but like i said it's been getting better it's 
it's usually like noon before noon, one o'clock in the afternoon before, you know, I'll be sitting at my desk all day, my foot's down, all the blood's mm. getting in it, just da da da. Yeah. It's like, yeah, okay, I need a little relief. So, right. But but yeah, thanks for that. Great tip. So what you got going on for the rest of the day, girl? Oh, meal prepping, laundry, yeah. maybe uh play with my kids. They are they're really cute today. <laughs> I bet. So, you look yeah. fantastic. You just got back from church. Thank Was that your you. Church to outfit church. today? Yes. And uh, <laughs> my my little sister's visiting too. She's from North Carolina. So she's oh, nice. staying up here with me for like three weeks. And so nice. she went with us this morning. And I just love her. I wish she would move here, but I live in North Dakota and it's yeah. very cold. So I don't think. Yeah, it does get here. cold in the wintertime. That's for sure. <laughs> But I love having her up here any chance I get because we live so yeah. far away and I yeah. have a little sister. I love Family's her. Family's so. awesome. Yeah, my brother's about three hours from me, so it's not it's not too bad. My baby brother, he's nice. literally fifteen years younger than me. That so. my sister's fifteen years younger than me. Yeah, nice. yeah so he's oh the my baby, God. baby. But that uh, is so cool. The funny thing too is that I so I'm the oldest, he's the baby baby, and we are I almost identical. Like in attitude, yeah. demeanor, <laughs> like it's so we get along swimmingly, right? Like yeah. we're the best of friends. Oh, we talk cool. we yeah. talk almost every day. Uh we have a good time. But we're going up there in a couple of weeks. We're gonna hang out with him. And my dad, uh, they were out in Washington, he retired and they they moved out on the, the lake, Lake Gunnersville up north here in alabama as well so we're gonna go up hang out with my brother hang out with my dad and, nice uh, smoke a little chicken that's awesome yeah it's good times good times yeah well valerie it is always a pleasure to have you on the show Thank uh, you. i couldn't have asked for a better way to to you know kick the show back off i just needed a break people i needed a break i i went yeah. hard for a year like never took a day it was i don't think i think we missed one or two weeks uh that mm -hmm. that first year and in a month or so and i just i needed a break i just had yeah. a lot going on so and which was nice but now i'm raring up i'm ready to go we got some good guests lined up we kicked it off with, uh, look at that, my mic just fell. I got, I, <laughs> matter of fact, before you got on, my mic busted, right? So the bracket oh. busted. So I kind of got it rigged up here, and I was literally waiting for you. I'm like cruising Amazon. I'm like, I need a new mic stand. Oh, man. So, but no, it's, it's, thank you so much for coming on and hanging out with yeah. us. I want to wish that you're back. I hope it gets better. Oh, I hope you, you can continue you. to be functional and, and work hard uh prayers with you always you Thank and your you. family uh hope them kids keep doing well you got any final words here before we sign off today oh, you always catch me off guard with that and i should expect it by now you should um final words if you're going through anything hard in life pray about it there you god go god has the answer yeah and he's yeah. probably the only one that has the answer so don't try to figure out uh, figure it out on your own yeah, yeah, I agree with that 100%. And hey, you know what? You may not even like the answer, but he's going to give you one. That's true. I think that's a that lot of people true. might say, yeah, God doesn't answer my prayers. No, he answered. He just didn't like the answer. Right. You, and you're like, that's, mm -hmm. you know, I asked for this. Well, we, as, as you know, in this life, we don't always get what we ask for, but oftentimes mm -hmm. we get what we need. That's right. That's right. right? Mm -hmm. Well, thanks, girl. Stay beautiful. Tell JW we said hello. Uh, you know, he is my man crush. We can't be uh, denying him. I know, I know. And you guys, everybody, you get out there and work hard, people. And so remember, don't forget to smile. Thanks so much for watching. We're listening. Remember, don't forget to like and subscribe. You can find us on Facebook at Work Hard People's LLC or Instagram at Work Hard People's LLC. You can also find us on our website at workhardpeoples.com. Have a great day or night. Don't forget to smile.